back to Harbo. The stock market set it for 10,000 again. That's good news. But why isn't President Obama getting any credit? I'm joining right now by Jim Cramer, my pal from Philly. Philly won last night. We certainly hope in the interest of America they win tonight. He's the host of CNBC's Mad Money and the author of a new book called Getting Back to Even. Well, I guess the big question I would have, Jim, if you had a look, say, five, ten years from now, looking back to now with the clarity of history, does Barack Obama deserve credit for, A, avoiding a second Great Depression as he came into office with the strong stimulus of almost $2 trillion in fiscal stimulus, huge printing of money, the bailouts, etc. And secondly, has he really put us on the course to recovery from this recession? All right, I think it's a team effort. Chris, first of all, Ben Bernanke was late but really went into high gear, and the transition from Bush to Obama was really saved by Bernanke's actions. Second, Bernanke did a good thing, uh, but also Tim Geithner did a good thing. And you could argue, well, Tim Geithner is totally Obama's man. Uh, Geithner made everybody feel that the banking system was safe. Once we had the banking system safe, we began to have the recovery. So Obama should get a lot of credit for that. Well, you know, when the, when the politicians wag and the right wing goes after them, as they do, that's the way politics works, they say bailouts, 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 as if there's something wrong with the guy. They say deficits, 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 as if there's something wrong with the guy. But everything I studied in college and grad school was you've got to do those things, both in terms of the sectors of the economy, which were in trouble, the financial sectors, the auto industry, and you had to do something with regard to the overall economy in terms of printing the money, monetary policy, fiscal policy. The very things he did are the things you're taught you have to do. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're totally right. I hear those people criticize, and I think, did they ever read any history about what this country did wrong between 1929 and 1932? This was exactly what these pundits are calling for is exactly what created a multi-year yeah. depression. No, I mean, Bernanke, Obama, Geithner, they got it right. Well, all you hear from on the right is like Terry Jeffries, my pal, who sits here like from human events from the far right. They come on here as if all you had to do was laissez-faire. Set back, let the invisible hand solve the problem. <laughs> Say's law is still in effect. Every, all the markets are going to work. Everything's going to clear. They actually say this crap, Paula, so loudly, they must believe it or else they're just desperate. But they do believe that doing nothing was the right hand. Just balance well, the budget. Dreamers. Let Look, business solve the problem. Here's the hand. It wasn't invisible. It was choking a we are very lucky that these guys understood history. Now, the reason why it's easy to criticize Obama and why he doesn't take any credit is we haven't created any jobs yet, Chris, and that yeah. is bad. Okay, and let me ask no you a question. Mind, that's bad. Well, let's talk about how we keep score in electoral politics. That's how we keep score. Right. Between now and next uh, summer, when people begin to decide how they're going to vote in the next year's election, will the unemployment rate be coming down by then? Unequivocally. I think that we have seen the peak or are at the peak and that next 98. year will produce a lot of jobs. I'm very excited about that. Well, we're looking at that peak. We just showed it up there on that card. Nine point eight percent. Do you think it's going to go above double and then come back down or, st or go down from where it's at now? I think we are at the peak or within okay. a, a point one. We are not going to breach 10 percent. I have my neck on the line on that. But I think, okay. Chris, the jobs are going to be created next year. But we really need more help from Washington. OK. When Ronald Reagan got reelected with that good feeling in the country for a lot of the country, you got to admit it was good feeling. Forty nine yeah. states voted for him and probably Minnesota really did. But, you know, Ed Rollins let him have that one. Uh, he always told me that. Uh, the country felt good. The unemployment rate when Ronald Reagan had good morning, uh, I was saying GMA, good morning right. in America, they had morning in America, was 7%. People thought that was great after that 11% rate under the Reagan re recession. Right. Will we be down as low as 7 by 2012? Oh, boy. That's, by 2012, yes, I think we will. I think we'll have a good economy, and it'll really ignite. But you know what? We really need to have the stimulus more towards shovel-ready projects. We When is that going to... Okay, second question. Does there need to be a real stimulus package? You know, uh, David Garth, the great political consultant, right. said you have to remove the smell of decay and replace it with the smell of construction. We all know what construction smells like. Dirt, concrete, cement, wood. You can smell it on the streets when you walk by a construction site and you're a, super, a sideways superintendent. When is that going to happen? When are the cranes going to go up? When are the highways going to be rebuilt? What happened to the true infrastructure spending that we're supposed to see. We, we never really what got happened it. to it. We never got it. Even if you look at the numbers initially, they were no they were really just a little bit bigger than the big dig. Well, was it all just Boston. pay off the mayors and governors? Where did all that money go? Well look, some people think it was just pay off and political went to uh, to people who already had jobs for state and local governments yes, and for I the think. bondholders. And I've got to, to tell avoid you, I'm, 
uh, to avoid shutdowns and, and layoffs. But it didn't right. go to construction projects, which people could smell and see. Absolutely and I think didn't. that's what bugs people. And that's why Pelosi's not popular. <laughs> She's not popular because she presided over the creation of a big grab bag of stuff right. from condoms to God knows what. And did not. No, I'm serious. No, the crap that was in there. The kind of, Instead the real of it, she had said the tractors are coming, the highway repair stuff, the bridge is going to be fixed, the school Have buses it. will ride safely. From now on, the country would have said, you know, this is a little bit Democrat, but it ain't socialism, it's Democrat. And they would have said, good for them. We did not but they get, didn't do that. Right, we did not get infrastructure. Okay. We're not crisscrossing the country with new highways or pipelines for natural gas. We are not putting people to work. We are still okay. losing jobs. There may be as much as 18 percent is the real unemployment mm -hmm. because if you include the people who haven't okay. who have given up. And that's why Obama can't take credit for what's happening. You know what so I did back when I was working for Tip O'Neill? The Republicans were yelling against jobs programs. So I called the chief engineer in Peoria, which is the town of the leading opposition leader, Bob Michael. And I said, how many bridges are below code? He gave me the list of the bridges below code safety code and their addresses. And Tip O'Neill went out on the floor with that list and read that list of bridges below code, where if school buses went over, there'd be a problem. And you know what? Bob Michael, the Republican leader, decided he better get off the floor for a while. That's how you play politics. You Real bet. jobs. What happened to the old Democratic Party of jobs? Anyway, thank you. Oh, thank Jim you, Kramer. Chris. You're a right And go on. Phillies.